Okay, here we have Emotive Strings for Native Instruments Contact. This is a collection of 175 phrases. Of course, they were played by a full live orchestra. In this video, we're going to go over basically everything in the manual. But of course, this is better than the manual because you'll see what everything does. So you heard some high phrases there. We also have low phrases. Okay. We have single pitch, melodic, emotives, and arpeggios. So we can all play and trigger basically with one key, two keys, three keys, and so on. So again, I can hold one key here. I can hold two, three. So let's jump right into emotive strings. Here it is in contact. This is what it looks like. Just the one instrument there. You can, of course, have multiple instantiations of emotive strings within one instantiation of contact. We have contact running in Pro Tools. You could, of course, run contact in any other DAW or run it in standalone. So here is emotive strings when it comes up. This is the default here. Up here at the top, you'll see our expression. That's controlled by our mod wheel. Either program that into your DAW, use your slider down here, use your slider up here, or use your mod wheel on your keyboard there. And that of course, going to control the expression. So as an example, you can get more realism by of course, using your mod wheel while you play that in, or of course, programming it in your uh, DAW. Over here, we're gonna come back to this a few times. We have our current phrase, that is playing here. We are on the C0 note, on the C0 phrase. Here's a different one. It tells us our current phrase and the velocity. Now this is single P, so it's a single phrase. We also have phrases that can play multiple phrases within one phrase, so different phrase modes. They can play up or down or in different keys, which we'll look at that uh, in a minute. But right here, let's focus on the main page here. We have slots one to five and slots six to 10. So slots six to 10 will be blank whenever you uh, first load this up, but you can load in another five different phrases in here just by clicking on an empty phrase. Come in here to your phrases. You can filter by high ensemble, low ensemble, single pitch, melodic, emotives, arpeggios, four, four, or odd timing. You can click, listen to a phrase, low ensemble. And melodic. Emotives here. And whenever you find something you want, you can double click it. You can use the check mark here, or if you just want to back out, click the X. So we can just double click that. Loads it right up there in that in that slot. Let's go back here to slot one to five. We'll come back to that in a minute. So right now we have the blurred rhythm slurred theme loaded up. We can click the name here and come to our themes page. We can also choose the search icon there, come to our themes. We can also step through our themes here. So now we have a different theme. And it loads up five different phrases that all fit well together. And here on the E0 trigger here, you can see usually that's going to be an ending note. Just an ending note. You can kind of play, you can play in some short lines with the ending note if you want, but it's really meant to sort of end a phrase. Okay, now I'm just clicking these triggers right now. We can of course access these triggers down here on the red keys. Obviously that's on your actual MIDI keyboard. Or of course by programming those in your DAW. So we can keep switching through our themes this way. And as you can see, it loads up different articulations, different string sets, uh, depending on what we have here. Again, click the name or the icon. 
come through here and find whatever theme you think will work well. Again, we can filter the themes the same way we can filter the, uh, the single phrases. So a theme again is the whole set. Now, of course, this is going to be, you know, the speed that this plays back is going to be connected to our DAW, or if you're running contact and standalone, of course, that as well. Now keep in mind that what we're playing here is actual audio loops. You come back here, and let's go back to say melodic or single pitch. Just grab this again. Right, this was say 200, and I played that. Okay. Now again, because they're audio loops, we can't go too crazy here. So if I went to 350, doesn't sound horrible, but you can start getting sort of glitching effects if you try to push this too far, either high or low. So if I try 50, for example, you know, it doesn't sound that great. They recommend somewhere between 80 and 200 uh, for your BPMs for the uh, time stretching. Let me put this back to 120. All right, so just keep in mind if the phrases are playing back too fast here in this demo, you can obviously change that tempo in your DAW or here in contact if you're running it in standalone. All right, so now if I'm playing some keys here, I can of course trigger, as we've already seen, the changes with our uh, triggers here. I'm just gonna hold down one key. Let's start up here at C0. Now I can click directly in here or I can click the keys, or I can use my keyboard, whatever you want to do. So you can switch that live. Let's go to something a little bit different here. And they all stay in time. Now, of course, if I lift my finger and start over, that's going to start over that, that uh, phrase. But if I play legato, meaning no breaks, so I'll have a key held down, whenever I press down another key, I'm still lifting up that first key. I haven't exactly stopped you know, playing. So I'll hold it down, hit another key. So that way everything stays in time as we're moving up in pitch. And of course it starts over. Now we can, of course, switch these uh, live here with our triggers. And if you're not playing that in and instead you're programming, keep in mind these triggers just will need one little note here uh, in your DAW. So for example here, let me go ahead and show this here. And I want to come down here. We have C0 up to E0. So we'll come down here to that range. So here's C0, C sharp. Okay, so if I want C0 here, then maybe C sharp somewhere up here. All you need is this little note. You don't need to have it span the entire space. If you don't want to, you can, but you don't have to necessarily, okay? So right there. Grab this note here. Let's just pull it back to say bar two. That's large enough there. Of course, just these triggers, if I play back, you're not gonna hear anything. You're gonna see the trigger switch. We don't hear anything. Those are just, you know, those are just triggers. So up here, you can start actually drawing in the actual note you wanna play. We'll just say one phrase here, all the way across. And there it goes, it switches once it hits this uh, trigger down here, as you saw that. All right, so that's programming this uh, in your DAW. But again, there's nothing wrong with uh, having those notes span the entire space, if you want them to. All right, so once again, you don't just have to play one note. 
You can play multiples. And of course, remember to use that mod wheel while you're playing things in as well. That's gonna make it much more realistic. Now in here, we highlight these phrases. We can see the names, fourth nodes, eighth, uh, triplets there, ostinato, and here's our ending note there. We can also see the original BPM, and there will be other information in here depending on the type of phrase that we have, okay? So let's just change one phrase if we want. I'll just click on just this phrase. We're on a motives here. We can not filter that if we don't want to, just see all of them. Click on them to hear them. But we have different kinds of phrases. So here's single pitch phrases. Here's melodic phrases, and these are interesting because you can see right here, major, minor. So this phrase here could be played in major or minor depending on the velocity that we uh, hit our key with. So let's check that out. Go and accept that. So now we have this phrase right here. By the way, you can set up your own phrases in any of these slots, and you can save your own snapshot just by choosing the camera here and saving your own snapshot. There's also snapshots that are pre-programmed that, that are factory snapshots. Just again, choose your camera icon. Down here, you can see our basic snapshots here, the melodic, and then here's the low sections right here. And we can't have the low and the high at the same time, you know, playing at the same time within one instantiation of emotive strings. You could of course have, you know, I could have a low section here if I wanted to, which is no problem, All right? I could switch between those. Of course, just by uh, switch over there. Now, if I switch, okay, so you can have the low phrases and the high phrases in the same instantiation. What I mean is, you know, if you want to play them at the same exact time, you would probably want multiple instantiations of emotive strings uh, within contact here. But let's focus on this phrase here. Let me go back to our storyteller. There we go. So I highlight this. We can see it's major, minor, 4, 4, 1, 10. So if I press a note now, you see up here where it says velocity, if I hit it soft, it's playing major. Now if I press it hard, it's playing minor. So 1 to 69 is going to be your major as far as velocity goes. And then above that is going to be minor. So I'm pressing literally the same key. I'll press it soft and then hard. We have two different phrases within this one phrase, so a different phrase mode. So you can combine that while you're playing in or of course within your DAW as well. So up here again, just so you know what I mean by velocity. Come in here and make sure we are up here. Just draw a note in there and use our drop down here in Pro Tools. And here is our velocity right there. So it's 111 right now. Of course, if I play that back, we're going to see this is going to be minor. But if I had this down to 69 or below, so we'll put it on 62. And now we'll play it back. We didn't change the note at all, just the uh, velocity. Now it's major. All right. So if you play something in wrong, no big deal. Head into your DAW and just adjust those velocities. So again, I could play those in. I'm switching between major and minor, just two different keys. Pressing one soft. And then one hard. Okay. So that's your major and minor modes for your for your phrase. Again, that's not everything. It's only it's only some of the different phrases here. And you can tell which ones they are if they say major, minor, and then of course the uh, the four four the time signature. So not all of them, but quite a few of them have that. So we'll try that one there. Put it here on this slot. 
major, minor. Then we have another type. Let's just choose this one here. Let's go over here to the emotives. And here we can see chord plus note. So this is a different phrase mode that uh, we can do with our emotives. Let's just choose, say the up down scale. Let's choose this one here first. So fourth up scales. Make sure we select that. And now we have these green keys down here, which is something different, right? This is completely different. You can see this green here corresponds to this green down here. Same here, chord, green, note is blue. All right, C major. So I can press a key, any of these green keys, and just press one if I wanted to. That switches it to an E major. So that takes away some of my blue keys. Right, choose a different note, here's a B major. And we did not change our trigger here at all. We didn't change our triggers. So there's several modes, phrase modes within this one phrase. So again, you don't have to hit one key. You could hit a whole chord in the green key section, say on your keyboard, or of course programming that in your DAW. Let's play a C there. And when I play the C, I don't get any sound. You see, it just changes here. Here's an E minor to F major. So there's an E minor there. Of course, when I trigger a note now. I'm just holding down two keys. And then three keys there. So you can do that as well to really build things up. Switch the chord again, and you get the idea. Let's just change this one now. Let's look at the up-down scales. Double click that one. So now, same thing, chord, note, but up here you can see up, down. So we have an option of playing it up or playing it down. So you'll see what I mean here. This, of course, will be controlled by velocity. Just going to click C right there. Now, if I press a key hard, it's gonna play up. If I press it soft, again, below 69, it's gonna play down. So same key, up, soft, down. That's holding down two keys at the uh, same time. Same thing applies that we already saw in here whenever we uh, programmed our velocity. So you can always change that after the fact. Now what you might not know about contact is the keyboard in here, whenever you trigger things, is velocity sensitive. So if I press a key by clicking it down here towards the bottom, that's a high velocity. If I press a key closer up here, that's a low velocity. So again, down here, high velocity, it's playing up, Low velocity, it's playing down. Now use them in conjunction with each other to uh, complete your score. Okay, let's change this again because we have another type here, arpeggios. We have up here, we have down here, we have up, down, up, down. We'll just go for the up for now. Select that. So up here, current phrase, play a major or minor chord. So if I hold down one key anywhere, either you know on my keyboard, here in contact, programmed in your DAW, you're not gonna hear anything. We gotta play a chord. And up here we can see the chord I'm holding down. I could change one note in that chord if I wanted to while I'm, while I'm still holding down the other two notes. Going between a C major, A minor.
Let's change this now just by clicking on it. And let's go to one that's up down. Select that one. So again, play a major or a minor chord, same stuff here. Just play C. So that's basically all of your different types there. Again, keep in mind the emotives there with the up down scales. And the velocity. So again, choose say D there. That's down, hit it hard. It will play up. So of course you would come in here if you don't like one of these setups here. You can customize all of your phrases. Just choose whatever you want for each slot all the way up to 10 slots total. And just switch between those again, either on your keyboard in here in contact in here in contact or uh, by triggering those notes in your DAW. Now we'll look at the sound page here. We have reverb on or off. Turn it off. Let me change my Go to something else here. Turn it on. Of course, you have your different types here. And then the amount. Just dial that in to taste. We have a master EQ setting. We can't actually change these settings. We can just choose off shape one or shape two. Go off. One and then two. Turn that back off. Stereo image, normal or wide. And then mic position. Whenever we change this, we will get new samples loaded up here. Put this back on the eye there. If I take this too close, different samples there. And to hear that even better, let me change something here. Let's say a single pitch. And that works. Make sure that's triggered. Put it on stage. That's all the settings in here. Turn reverb back on. Just basic stuff that you can uh, click through and decide what sounds best. Then we have a playback tab here. Our phrase release, which is going to determine, of course, the release time of the phrases. It's really low. It goes on for a bit there whenever I release a key. Then legato transition. Now this of course is whenever we're playing in legato, meaning without breaks. So a note will still be down or partially down whenever we choose another note. So if it's way down here, one C here. You can see I'm playing legato because this timer keeps moving. Okay, now this is a simple phrase, but you'll still hear this. I have the volume way, way up. Okay. So if I just stop playing, if I completely raise the key, of course it's going to start over. We're not going to get that uh, control uh, making any difference. But if I keep one key down, whenever I press another one, You hear how that comes in. So that's obviously too loud, but you might not want it all the way down. You may, you may not. Going back here, put a little volume on that just so it doesn't drop out. It doesn't drop out completely, you know. Flows a little better that way. And then we have the tempo. 
So of course this is going to correspond to whatever we have set in our DAW. Half it or up to two times. Or one to one, which of course is whatever it's going to be set on. All right. So that is all of your controls. A lot of stuff here in a mode of strings that can help you build your composition much quicker than having to try to program all of this in or play all of this in in your DAW. And of course, it sounds more realistic because these phrases were, of course, played live. So it's not the same thing as using a bunch of, you know, single. Single notes. One more time for this legato, just so we're clear here. We head in here and just trigger a note here. So legato would be if this note here was overlapping that note. All right. So that's without breaks. We pull it out a bit further. So if our control was really loud. You hear that there. So just set this wherever you want that uh, transition, that volume to be. So it flows better. Okay. We've been focusing mainly on the uh, top end. Let's come here to our snapshots and we'll just load something from the low just to hear some of this. Load that up. Here's our ending note. Of course, I just clicked it here, but you could, of course, trigger that down there as well, or again, program it in your DAW. Go to the next one there. We're on that ending phrase right now. Up here to CO. And I played all of that just pressing three keys. Select your key switches while you're playing, of course. Next one here. All right, so don't forget your snapshots up here. Be a quick way of loading. Uh, things up. Go back to the highs. one and just pressing a few keys getting that entire phrase or you could do multiples two keys at once works better on some than it does others of course so again we could change our theme in here if we want something that's melodic so like that change my whole theme
we can see what's actually playing here. We can see these half notes are playing with accentuation there. Here's a rest on these before they start. Okay. And again, we can always change individual phrases. And of course, get a preview of those. Filter here. Of course, this one here has major, or press it hard for minor. Now I mentioned having multiples of these. You could of course have two, three, four, whatever you want. Instantiations of emotive strings in here and then just make sure you route them properly. So if you're using multiple MIDI channels, you probably want, say, the low section to be on two, perhaps, and the high section to uh, you know, be on, on one or whatever you happen to be using. But you could do Omni, if you want, just to get an idea. Go to Melodic here, we'll just grab something, just to prove the point. So right now we're only seeing the high keys. But if I put this one here in focus, now we see the low keys there as well. We can actually play both of these at the same time now because we have you know, two different instantiations and they're both coming in on A1. It's just the low there. Right down here. Get a key trigger. Go down to D0 here and here as well. So not necessarily ideal. You would probably want to do this, you know, in shifts, you know, record your record your low first or your top first, whatever you uh, prefer, and then go back and record the uh, the other one. Of course, these phrases don't really match very well. But you could. If you wanted to. Try to find something that fits a little bit better. Just change the high one there. Then come down here. We change the low to something else there. Obviously, we could just change individual phrases as well. Okay. That again is just an example of something you could do. And of course, you could save this here within contact if uh, you wanted to. I don't necessarily recommend this. I'm just showing you uh, what you could do uh, if you wanted to. It makes much more sense to use one instantiation of contact, multiple instantiations of emotive strings, but have these on different channels and then have different MIDI channels triggering the, uh, obviously, the correct channel within uh, contact here. But that is possible for those who want to, who want to do that. So that is emotive strings. You can buy it on its own or you can get it included with Complete Ultimate or the new Complete Ultimate Collector's Edition. The mode of strings comes in at about 20 gigs on your hard drive. So that is emotive 
strings for native instruments contact.